what's going on everybody blue raven here and i got a lot of stuff to cover today in this video it's all related to destiny and the upcoming expansion shadowfall is it shadow excuse me uh it's not called shadowfall it is called um sh shadow keep shadow keep um shadowfall that's that's isn't that like kill zone or something anyways shadow keep and there's a lot to unpack on this because uh, originally we, we'd, we'd been told that after this season ended, they were just going to give us another season and an annual pass and some more DLCs. That's still going to happen, but we are going to get an expansion, the likes of Taken King and Forsaken um, in September. And then there's going to be an annual pass added onto it. I will show you what I'm talking about right now with that. Um, right here. Destiny 2 Shadowkeep. The next chapter in the Destiny experience arrives this fall as terrifying shadows descend upon a forgotten moon. Return to the lunar surface. Journey deep into the mysterious enemy cathedral. Become a slayer of nightmares. And uh, there's two purchases. They're standard and deluxe. Deluxe gives you the annual pass, which is... I'll probably try to get the physical edition through GameStop. If I can't, then I'll just buy the digital like I always do from Destiny. Um, big other thing I'm going to tell you guys about before I cut to some other stuff is I am going to give a copy of this game away. Uh, Destiny 2 Shadowkeep. I'm going to give a standard copy, so you're not going to get... Your, it's going to be the standard edition. Uh, it can be on Xbox. Uh, it can be on any console. Um, it's going to be for this video. You have to uh, make sure to like the video, be a subscriber, and... Um, uh, hmm... Leave me a comment uh, when you found my channel. If today is the first day you found my channel, if you've been with me for, since the beginning, let me know. Um, but I will be giving away a copy of this before uh, it releases. So um, I'll announce the winner in a couple of weeks or something like that. But it's, I'm going to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a time to um, I don't know si um, simmer, get enough people to see that I'm giving away a copy of it, and. Yeah. So, on that note, I'm going to be cutting from live footage, which is what I am in right now, uh, to the trailer. You're going to see the trailer for Shadow Keep, and then right after that, I'm going to cut straight in from that to um, the Vidoc about Shadow Keep. Uh, it explains a lot of what's going on, and then after that, after that, after the Vidoc, you'll come back and you'll see me uh, playing the game and. Um, I'll be talking, I have some bullet points I want to go over, and because I watched the live stream uh, where they actually went more into depth on some of the stuff. There's some stuff they don't talk about in the Vidoc, um, so that I, I do want to touch base so people can have a better understanding of what's going on. Plus, I'm going to give my overall reaction of where I think Destiny is going, if it's good or bad. On that note, I hope you guys enjoy uh, the trailers and the Vidoc. Listen, this is the most editing I've ever done for a video, uh, so... Likes, much appreciated. Subscriptions, much appreciated. Share the video, even more appreciated. Um, like I said, this is a lot. Of, this is the most editing I've ever done for a video, so I'd really appreciate the help. The the, you know, the help from you guys. On that note, I hope you guys enjoy the trailer, and I'll see you guys. In Looking to the future always brings us back to the past. Can you feel them? I can still hear their voices. Their endless torment reshapes our moon. Nightmares now stalk the surface. Walking shadows, seeking vengeance. Our old fears, they rise again. And in the dark below? Something wicked has awakened. We must bring an end to this suffering. One way... This really is the beginning of a new era, and I think beginning is an important part of that sentence. 
this is the first time I think that, you know, in a long time that Bungie has stood kind of on its own. And we're self-publishing, it's a really big deal. There's a huge opportunity here for us to really make our own decisions. It's a turning point for us. We are in charge of our own destiny. It's empowering and terrifying at the same time. There are only two groups who are gonna decide what happens to Destiny next. Bungie and the players who play Destiny. So at its core, Shadowkeep is about returning to the moon. We haven't been in the moon in a while since yeah. Destiny 1, and a lot's changed. When you go back, it isn't exactly what you thought it was. There's like huge cracks ripped into it. There's a weird scarlet fortress. And so the context of the moon has been updated entirely. This isn't just about the hive anymore about something else, something terrifying. The moon this time around is something really scary that is playing on your fear in a way that hasn't happened before. Before it was, oh, it's a big giant thing and it's scary, but now there's actually like some psychological elements to that. How long has it sat in silence watching us? Much too long. Having Eris Morin come back instantly signals to players the tone shift and change. There's an undertone of threatening and psychological horror. You're all insufferable! We want to tap into what makes Guardians afraid. What are their worst fears? Shadowkeep refers to the things that Eris unleashed on the solar system. Nightmares are manifestations of a guardian's past. What if the villains that you thought were well into the ground actually weren't, and they were being resurrected by the darkness? Eris is trying to figure out how she unleashed this kind of madness, and so she needs your help. You can't just kill them and make them go away. What if you can't do all of the things that you've grown accustomed to doing? Being unable to achieve what you're trying to achieve, no matter how hard you try. Players, they think we can deal with this. We killed Crota, like we killed Oryx. Like, no big deal, right? Well, you're gonna get there and you serve it's a bigger deal than you even thought it could be. The darkness is actually a lot closer than you realize. Now you know my suffering. It's been a year, basically, of just a constant two-way dialogue with all of our passionate players. Under it or on the sides of it more? The number of green... That's really informed what it is that players want out of the Destiny game and how we're evolving, not just the story of the world, but what happens to you as a guardian. Like the, the thing that's supposed to blow you back or whatever, it's related to acceleration. A bunch of the work that we're doing is about adding depth to the character sheet, you know? The teams are thinking about how do we want to evolve armor? get more stats into the game, get more player customization. How can we get the depth of pursuit for how you want to play with this awesome character you've been building now for, you know, some of us five years. And like completely new ways of deepening the like character RPG that we all know and love yeah. and want to be better.
In Shadow Keep, we are fundamentally evolving the systems and moving the world forward. You want to bring some of that sci-fi element back to it, where it's yeah, like, some like panels yeah, or exactly. something. We've been dancing this line between, I'm you know, like, are we RPG enough? Are we not RPG enough? And now we're like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just go all in and just say, like, hey, let's give players what they want. Allow them to kind of like customize the players and their their habits and their game modes and all that stuff as much as they want to. So in Shadowkeep, what we're doing is changing the way that armor perks and mods work pretty significantly. Right now in the game, if you have an armor set that you like the look of, but you have another armor set that you like the way it plays, you're probably going to pick the one that you like the way it plays. Armor 2.0 is focused on allowing you to take the mods that you've unlocked and apply them to any given piece of armor. When I move my cursor over one of these mod sockets, it immediately shows me all of the mods that are available to me. Personally, I'm excited about the artifact. Players just get to kind of like fidget with these knobs and switches and do all the things that they want to do. When you get to this last tier, each of these perks gets relatively close to what an exotic might feel like. That's going to be a lot of fun. Going to be a lot of fun. Finishing moves are a new thing for Shadow Keep. What's your favorite? I mean, there's some crazy ones for the hunter. This awesome flourish where he actually does like spin in front of him, has two knives, and then just hits, hits. I was like, what the heck? Like, what game is this? Yeah, Titan Finisher. He jumps in the air, pulls back, looks at his fist, and... It's kind of like the dunk. There's so many different ways to dunk. You can behind the back, you know, 360 cartwheel, whatever. We're in the playtest lab every day trying to figure out what's good for the game, what do people want, what, are they, what have they been asking for, trying new ideas. So I want to try, I've had a, I had a radar hiding. Let me know how it feels to get shot by the heavy bow. I am working on an exotic heavy bow, um, and I'm just working on figuring out some knockback, trying to see how big this, okay, that's probably too much, but you get the idea. This is an exotic trace rifle. Fire it on an enemy and it creates a big old crit spot. Here's a hand cannon that Victor's working on. It fires special ammo and it's a little bit like a, a one-handed sniper. Like it's actually our only hand cannon with a scope on it. Right now it kind of lights you on fire if you keep firing it too much. We'll see, some people like it, some people are kind of eh, but uh, we'll hammer it all out. All right, it's time. Oh, it's about to get loud in here. 1v1. 1v1 on the board. Oh! One of the things we really want to focus on, especially with Season 8 and the start of Shadowkeep, is a renewed focus on PvP. <laughs> We're updating labs to include some much-loved game types from the past. We're also redoing a bunch of the playlists and how they work. but. The really important thing for players to know is this is just the beginning. This is us building the foundation of what we're doing with the Crucible going forward. Previously, you would have a 20, 40, 60 hour climb before you could do what's considered in-game content. And now you can pretty much do that immediately. We want you to feel like you are in the end game from the moment you step on the planet. Bottling up your guardian and becoming more powerful, overcoming dungeons, overcoming raids. For the raid, we had multiple destinations that we were considering, and Black Garden was like immediately top of the list. And everyone was like, yes, and I was like, yes, that's the one I wanted. With Forsaken, we started finding more ways for players to customize and personalize their character and, and differentiate themselves. Shadowkeep's gonna push even further in that direction. The word which is really guiding us in a bunch of ways is depth. It's about experiential depth. When we look at how we're thinking about the next three, five years, it's really important to us. 
It's cool to have a game that you can invest in with your friends, tweak your monster killing machine and make it 2% better every weekend, doing different things and figuring out how to craft this perfect build that you feel like is your own. Like, that is cool, there's nothing nerdy about it. We're like happy to own that. We're gonna stand on that corner. As things change, uh, if the game doesn't feel like it's changing to meet the new landscape, it just all fall down. You know, part of our, our DNA is finding different ways to bring people together. We need a way to crush the barriers between friends. We all have friends who could play Destiny, who are interested in it, um, but then we think about recommending it, like, oh man, you're gonna have to play about 40 hours by yourself, and then you gotta pay all this money, and you know, maybe you should just play something else, and that can't be the story. We need an entry point for your friends to be able to get into Destiny. This is just simply about bringing people together to make it easy for players to enter this universe. There's a, a new entry point coming out in September called New Light, and New Light is a free-to-download experience. We're going to start off in the same place where Guardians first came into the world. Guardian. Guardian? Eyes up, Guardian. Work. You're alive. You started in the Cosmodrome. You're yeah. going back. Going back. Yeah, blessed from the past. Okay, it's not going to break orbit, but it just might get us to the city. It's as easy as come in, make a character, play the amazing introduction to the game, and then land in the tower. And then we'll set them loose to open up the world as they see fit and have sort of an array of potential in front of you. You can just start playing the game and get into the, some of the same activities that your friends might be playing. The campaigns from D to Year One, The Red War, Curse of Osiris, Warmind. Every world we have will be available for them to explore and to free roam and to do bounties on. Every cooperative strike, whether they're playing with friends or matchmaking, every competitive multiplayer map. The D to Year One raids like Leviathan. Full access to, to Gambit, the, the hybrid mode that we have, all these things are available to them for nothing. We've always said that Destiny is best when you play it with your friends, and we're trying to make it easier. So if your friends who are playing Destiny are on different platforms, we're adding cross save so that you can move between the different platforms and play wherever your friends are. Like if I'm playing and I want to move over to my PC, I should have my character go with me. We want Destiny to meet you wherever you want to play. So that's in incredibly important for us. We wanted to cross save before we shipped Destiny 2, right? Like, it, like a bunch of it was built. We just couldn't get there for capital R reasons. Um, and uh, many of those reasons have uh, disappeared. So we are headed full steam ahead on that. And we gotta figure out how we're gonna get there and how we're gonna give the players what they want. As culture as we can get. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Our original vision for Destiny was a, was a world that would evolve and change. We're leaning really hard into that because we believe that's where the future of Destiny is. The long horizon for Destiny is to become an evolving world. You know, it's you're gonna tune in to see what's gonna happen next. We can completely build Destiny in the vision that we want it to be in. A vision that isn't dictated by a commercial model or a business plan, but our creative vision and what we want to do for our players and what they want us to do with Destiny. We feel like our work isn't done. We have a series of missions that we need to finish before I think we have Destiny in the place that it needs to be, and we're back to, I guess, finish the fight, so to speak. <laughs> So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the Vidoc and the trailer uh, for Shadowkeep. And um, so, 
it's an expansion, not a DLC, um, but there is going to be an annual pass attached to it. Uh, and the way they're doing it this time around is instead of you um, with the new light system that they're at, that they're they're introducing into the game, um, you can per you can only you don't have to purchase everything to get everything. You can purchase a little bit here, a little bit there, and you get everything anyways. I kind of don't like that for the fact that people like me or like people I play with, where we buy, we spend the 30, the 40, the 50, the 60, the 120, whatever it is that, that they ask us to spend to get everything, to get the annual pass, to get all everything. Um, I don't like the fact that just a casual player can just jump in and have everything I have I that I've worked so hard to get. Um, I understand that they're trying to build the community more and I can't hate them for that. So on that note, I, I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah, okay, I get it. It's really cool. Um, but I w then you... The next thing I want to talk about is the nightmares. So the enemies we're going to be uh, be facing in the the expansion they're referred to as nightmares. Uh, as you can see from the trailer, we saw Oryx. Uh, we well, you saw hints of them in the trailer. In the Vidoc, you actually got confirmation that they were in there. You saw Oryx or not Oryx, uh, Crota. Excuse me. You saw Crota. You saw um, uh, Gaul. Um, and I believe, what's the dude from House of Wolves called? What was his name? Uh, I forget his name, but I saw him too. Um, I'm trying to go, where am I trying to go? Let's see. I don't want to get off topic, but I need to make sure I'm going the right direction. I am going the wrong direction. You go this way, okay. So anyways, um, uh, so it's all called Nightmares, and it has something to do with Eris Morn. Eris Morn has returned. Very excited about that. I'm so excited. To, you know, my second favorite character in Destiny is finally coming back. Cage was my number one. They killed him. I almost have this weird feeling they may be doing the same to Eris. Uh, she may not make it through this DLC or this expansion. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but she was my second favorite character because she she really pushed the storylines. So in Destiny 1, when she showed up in uh, the Dark Below uh, DLC, she really pushed the storyline of the Dark Below. Uh, in House of Wolves, she helped push that storyline a little bit, and then when Taken King came out, she really pushed that storyline. So she, that's she, they they use her really to get those to to get a lot of exposition out of the way, and um, she's a crucial character to the game, I believe. And the fact that she's been gone for so long and they're finally bringing her back makes me very happy. Um, uh, file share. That's the next thing I want to talk about. So. They, they talked about this, about that you can save it. Uh, now you can, once this comes out, you'll be able to save it, save your game on PlayStation and play it on Xbox. Save it on Xbox, play it on PC. This is true. They are going to do that. And they were talking about they had a crutch that was holding them back. That was AccuVision. Uh, I believe that's what, I, at least that's what I believe, was AccuVision was holding them back. Uh, now that they're their own publisher, they can do whatever they want. They don't need permission from anybody else. Um, the other big news that came out of the, 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 the stream that wasn't in the Vidoc, that part of the file sharing, is that uh, Destiny 2 is currently with AccuVision and currently with Blizzard Entertainment on Battle.net. When, when, uh, uh, um, the next expansion comes out, it's not going to be there no more. It's actually moving to Steam. Uh, but don't worry, if you have an account on PC and you're going, oh, am I going to lose my account because they're taking it away from Blizzard? No, all your stuff is transferring. They're just pa packing you up, moving you over to Steam and unpacking you in Steam. So it won't cost you a single dime if you already have a PC account. And the new Google, uh, what is it called? The, the new Google thing, the Google... Hold on. Uh, Stata. New, the new Google Stata through Google Chrome will allow you to play Destiny anywhere on any device. As long as you have Google Chrome, you'll be able to play Destiny. I think that's pretty cool. They're, allow, they're, the, the, they're allowing people to give... They're giving so much access to... They're allowing the game to have so much more access uh, accessibility to more people. And I find that to be very cool. Um... Uh, I hate when other people are doing... Dude, dude shut up. Go away. Um, I, I'm sitting there thinking I'm being attacked and it's just another another player messing with me. Um, let me get back to my notes. Um, 
So I talked about we the new light system where you can just jump into the game. Um, as a fresh character, you'll start out in the vanilla, which is kind of cool. I might do one just to see how it plays out because you get to play vanilla. Uh, you get to play the vanilla Destiny and get that nostalgia of being in the Cosmodrome all over again. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, it's got to be out here. Um, um, let's see what what. So yeah, and then so what the for, for what the new light system essentially is is any player who's thought about playing Destiny, but you know they were like, well, what do I need to buy? What do I need to do? They don't have to worry about that anymore. They just they can pick up the game, buy whatever the current season that's in, and they have full access to the game. They're gonna have full access. Uh, as far as uh, PlayStation, Sony, I don't know how Bungie and Sony's. Uh, 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 how they're going to be in the upcoming future because the Sony exclusives are gone as of the next expansion. Everybody's going to have access to all the strikes, all the exotics. It doesn't matter if you're on Xbox, PC, or PS4. Everybody's going to be on the same playing level. And I, I find that it's okay. You know what? There was some bad blood between Microsoft and, and Bungie for a long time after Halo. It's, it's time to move on. I, I, I completely, I'm, um, I'm completely 100% okay with that. The exotics aren't, it, the, the exclusives aren't even that ex that good of exclusives anymore. It's not like in Destiny 1 where it was Hawkmoon and, and uh, Four Horsemen and, and Monte Carlo and stuff like that. That was, you were like, oh, I need to have that. Um, eh. it, I like, I like, the, I like where Destiny's going with that. Um, as, as I spoke before about Eris Morn, I like the fact that she's coming back. Hey, I got the, I got fire and floods. That better be the low. Please be the low. Ah. Okay, well. Uh, that means the mark wasn't very high. Um, uh, okay, so anyways, um, Eris Morn's coming back. Uh, I love how they showed the actress who actually does her voice. They showed her actually in one of the rooms doing a lot of the stuff so they could get her facial expressions correct and everything. That was pretty cool. Um, everything is going to be taking place back. We're going back to the moon. Very excited about that. Uh, when I was watching the live stream, they did talk about there is going to be some nostalgia of the moon. So we are going to... I'm, I'm thinking the Hellmouth will, will still be there. Um, but some of the other areas that were in Destiny 1 won't. Um, I don't know. Well, I, I'll have to wait and see. But um, definitely, they said... Two times the size of, of the moon, the moon's um, area in the first game. So that's pretty cool. Um, um, but my opinion on how this is, you know, every time I think Bungie's starting to fall, every time I start to think, oh man, they need to pick their game up. They 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 do something like this. They come out with something just like they ki they killed one of the best characters in the game in the last expansion, and then they're going, okay. How do we up that? When the first expansion, it was the Taken King. It was Oryx. How do we up that? Let's kill one of everybody's favorite characters. Okay, now how do we up that? How do we make that better? I like the fact that they're going more into the RPG element of the game. That armor is going to finally mean something in this game. That's really exciting to me because, like they said, um, you may have a set of armor that you need to raid with, but you don't like the way it looks. And then you have a set of armor where you like the way it looks, but it doesn't It doesn't have the, the stats you want. Like... My armor, the armor that I currently rock that I love is this armor set. I'll show you what I look like when I, when I have it fully equipped. Where are you at? Is it this? It's the Great Hunt? Yeah. It's the Great Hunt. And then this right here. So, and this is actually a good overall, I mean, I could really go without the mobility on a Titan and get that into my recovery. But this is how my Titan looks right now. Once I get them to 750, I'll probably just infuse gear into this. Uh, that being said, there the new Tess Ever set looks really cool. That I, I might go with that too. Um, but that's the set I'm currently using. So um, now, obviously, I'm using just other stuff to level up right now. But um, oh, there we go. Uh, 709. Okay, I can delete this mark because we got another one. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I look kind of stupid right now. But as far as the, the way the game is going, I'm very, very excited for for um, the next expansion. 
Um, and, uh, I mean, it's right, it's already right here. They, as soon as they, as soon as they finished the stream, this showed up on my, um, on my map. And I thought that was really cool. They're already getting people hyped up for season eight. Um, now that's not to say season seven is done yet either. We still got a lot of stuff to do in season seven because we got the Solstice of Heroes event coming. We have, uh, we got new pinnacle weapons. There's a power surge. Rapidly raise your power of 690 to be competitive with a 690. I already moved up that. And then uh, I, what you just saw me do was I just completed one of the treasure bounties, which are for you go up here and you can talk to him and you, you uh, and you get him for him and yeah. Um, but I've completed them all for the week. The only other thing I need to do this week, uh, as far as this is, I need to do this again because see, this is powerful engram. Uh, which is a lot of fun. It is. It's a lot of fun. It's it's, it's a raid without all the the struggles of a raid. Um, it's pretty cool. I really like it. Um, and uh, yeah. So, anyways, guys, uh, that's all I have. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that uh, that they went over in the Vidoc or in, that I saw in the trailer that I want to talk about. The thing where I think that they might kill Eris off is that she has this gun, right? And she's wrapping these artifacts around her, these, these necklaces, which I'm assuming are artifacts, from her dead fire team. She's wrapping around the gun, and then she just drops the gun at the end of the trailer. So I don't know what that means. Like, are they going to kill Eris too? Because she's a very, like they said in the, they, they said in the, um, in the stream that she's not, we've always wondered, is Eris good or is Eris to become bad? They said, no, she's a good person. She's just, she's always got her hands in something. So she's always in, she's always in the center of, of the bad things are coming. And this is the darkness finally getting into our solar system. This is the nightmares. I believe, I really believe this is going to tie into the darkness, those pyramid shaped ships. And they even said, um, not just Eris Morn, but, um, um, uh, what's her name? The, the queen of the reef, uh, not Petra, uh, uh, Marisol. Marisol's going to have some dialogue in this one as well. Yeah, let's go to orbit. I'm trying to get shot at. Uh, so they said Marisol, but it's going to be really heavily around Eris Morn. Uh, missed your rival? Make sure the danger has been announced. If you miss your live, miss the live stream, there you go. <laughs> you can go to those if you missed the live stream. Uh, that actually really, that's perfect ending for my video. Is this right here. So if you missed it and you want to see anything, but like the actual live stream, those are all the locations you can, you can find them on. Um, but overall, I think it's going to be really good. I'm really excited for it. And uh, I'm definitely getting it. I'll be getting the season pass and everything like that. Like I always do. I'm a Destiny the whore. I, they, they, they come up with new stuff and I just eat it up. I'm like, yep, gotta buy it. That's just the way I am with Destiny. Um, but I don't know, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I did a lot. This is the most edited video I've ever done, so please show me some love on that like button. Also, if you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe. Um, if you've already subscribed, share this with at least 15 people you know. You're helping me out so much by doing that. And also, again, I said this at the beginning of the video, I am giving away a copy of Shadow Keep on any console so if you want it on pc for steam if you want it on xbox one if you want it on ps4 all you gotta do is like the video subscribe and let me know when you found my channel leave me a comment below i will be picking a winner in a couple of weeks so if you haven't heard anything in the next couple days don't feel bad i'm not picking it anytime soon we got three months before it comes out so a plenty of time to get you guys your pre-order and get it to you so don't worry about that um, I'll be taking care of that side of it. Uh, if you're, if you are also, if you are outside of the continental U S you need to let me know that. So if you leave me the comment when you from my channel, also let me know UK, Australia, da, 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 wherever you're at, because I have, if, if I purchase, if it, if it's on steam or something like that, or if it's on PSN or something, I have to purchase it in that currency. Otherwise it won't work. I've, I bought, uh, I bought a couple of PlayStation cards for people. I, and I, uh, they didn't work because I bought them for on U.S. currency and they lived in the U.K. So um, I had to fix those um, and it actually cost me more money than I wanted to spend. So if you live outside the U.S., make sure you let me know that too in your comment. 
I love you all. Hope everybody has a great day. Hope everybody enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye, guys.